our wild adventure, um, the Science on Summit 2012. I don't know if the lights can come up a little bit. It's very disconcerting. I don't know if we can have a little bit more light in here, but I would love that. Thank you. Um, it's my, well, first I want to welcome you. I'm Kenan, and I'm the one who invited you all here. And you are the people who accepted my invitation. And I'm really honored by this and really excited at the caliber of individuals we have here and the diversity of thinking, ideas, and um, I'll just go ahead and start using some of the, the issue words, emergence for the future. So I really, I really sense that this is um, a group of individuals that see something beyond what we're at right now in a big way. And I just want to call that out now as we start. I can take my Bluetooth off too. Um, it's my very sincere pleasure to introduce Larry Bach. Larry Bach is the one who is the organizer, creator, and um, the man behind the USA Science and Engineering Festival. We were part of the inaugural festival in October 2010, taking over the nation's capital. Uh, I do have a bio I'll share in a minute, but I just want to say one thing that's been really remarkable to me is that Larry is the, you'll find out in a minute, he's the founder of many companies, he's very busy, he travels all over, does all sorts of things, and when I email him, I usually get a reply in about five to ten minutes, but definitely within the hour. And it really taught me something about efficiency, and I don't even know what, but I just um, suddenly was over to a whole new realm of getting things done, and Larry has, represents that to me in just the most enormous way. Plus his vision of doing a festival about celebrating science and engineering in this country. So Larry is a serial entrepreneur who has founded, co-founded or financed the early stage growth of 40 companies in the life of physical sciences from inception to achieving an aggregate market capitalization in excess of $30 billion. He was the inspiration and executive director at the inaugural San Diego Science Festival and, as I said, the USA Science and Engineering Festival. He earned his BA in Biochemistry from Bowdoin College and his MBA in Finance from UCLA. And without further ado, I welcome Larry. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll start out by, yes, yeah, so I've spent most of my career as a serial entrepreneur. Uh, starting up high-tech and life science companies. And the last few companies I was involved in, I could not recruit Americans uh, to these advanced science positions. So I took a year off of, and lived abroad, and I bumped into these international science festivals, and I thought they were such a great idea. I came back to the United States sort of invigorated to create one. So maybe start out with um, wh why even have a science festival? Um, you know, society gets what it celebrates. So as a society, we celebrate Britney Spears and Paris Hilton, and we generate a lot of Britney Spears and Paris Hilton wannabes. But we don't celebrate science and engineering. Uh, and as a result, as I indicated, there's been a dramatic decline in the number of Americans pursuing those fields. Uh, so uh, last year, uh, we tried to put on the world's largest science festival, and I think we were pretty successful. Uh, our finale two-day expo on the National Mall, we drew about 650,000 people over those two days. Uh, so we're doing it again uh, this weekend. Uh, so what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about what we're doing this weekend, uh, and also um, tell you about the things that we learned last year and what we're doing differently. Um, so, uh, so what? We here's how we structure a festival. Uh, we kind of do it in a progression. So the first thing we do is we bring leading scientists and engineers into the schools um, uh, as role models for, uh, for, to be future scientists. Then we do the reverse of that. Uh, we bring the students and the public together at the major science venues around the region. And then finally, we bring the students, the public, and everybody together for this finale expo. Uh, and I'll talk about each of those different parts in turn. So the first part is bringing leading scientists and engineers into the schools. Uh, we do this for, through a program that we have that we call uh, the Nifty 50, uh, where uh, last year we rec recruited 50 scientists. This year we recruited 125 scientists to go into the schools 
in the month and a half in advance of the expo. So people often ask me, are you getting nervous about the, uh, these last two days before your event? We've actually been going on for the last two months. Uh, this is just the last, the final uh, two days of our expo. So um, uh, the first time we did this, um, we recruited some of the world's best scientists and engineers to go into schools. And uh, I have to say I was going to cry, you know, because I went to most of those presentations and I felt like we did more harm than good. Uh, because uh, we did, it wasn't just a matter of recruiting them for the best scientists, but we needed to also recruit those that are really good communicators to this age group. Uh, so the second time we did it, uh, we really went after not only uh, leading scientists, but people who could communicate to this, this audience. So we have people like Pulitzer Prize winners, uh, first private space flight astronauts, leaders of major government scientists on the front stage. And just as the kids' eyes were glazing over and they were wondering what they had gotten into, uh, alarm bells went off. Um, the people in, in uh, containment suits came in, locked down the facility, told them they had been exposed to a pathogen, and they had the next two hours to learn how to sequence a virus and develop a vaccine in a 24-episode type program. And I can guarantee you most of those kids well, kind of got what science was about at the end of that program. Uh, uh, we also do, you know, really kind of fun events. We had an event this year called um, Is the Ellipse Really an Ellipse? You know, so brought lots of students down to the ellipse and they got to measure and see, you know, is the ellipse is really an ellipse and where are the foci uh, and compete in something like that. We have, uh, we, I invite you uh, to a really fun program we have on Friday night at Georgetown University. It's a night of science comedy. We have four major comedians. Uh, telling science jokes. It's extremely funny. Last year it was totally packed, so please come to that. Uh, we have a, after our expo on Saturday, we have an astronomy night on the National Mall at the National Academy, I mean, uh, sorry, at the National Air and Space Museum. And then we do some really kind of funky things. Uh, we have uh, the world's largest science cheer. So on uh, Friday at our sneak peek day, we have um, ESPN and NFL and uh, NBA cheerleaders. Uh, who are also scientists leading a giant science cheer uh, at our expo. Um, so that's the second part of the festival, uh, bringing the students and the public to the major science uh, venues around the region. Uh, the finale uh, is our final two-day expo. It's actually three days this year. It's a Saturday and Sunday open to the general public, but we have a sneak peek Friday just for students from underserved schools, uh, military families, government officials, and the press. Uh, so I'd like to just take a few minutes to tell you about that. Uh, so our expo is meant to be uh, all hands-on, interactive, fun, and, and entertaining. It's not a science fair poster session. Um, it's not a competition. It's more all meant to be hands-on, interactive, fun, and entertaining. Uh, if you came to our expo on Saturday and Sunday, you would see the entire spectrum of sophistication. So we have everything from flight simulators and virtual reality environments and surgical robots. You know, you can go to uh, go up to a Da Vinci surgical robot and play the, the old game of operation and see how well you would do at that. Uh, to making structures with marshmallows and toothpicks. So our, our event is very much celebration of science and engineering. Um, uh, sorry, one of the things that we do to get uh, people to the expo is we invite a lot of science celebrities. Um, you know, that's sort of the hook to get people to come. So we have things like Bill Nye the Science Guy, the Mythbusters, uh, Apollo Robbins from uh, a big Hollywood person, people from Time Warp, CS, the TV shows NCIS, CSI, and so forth. So we have about, you know, probably about 20 major celebrities that kind of come to the event. And that's a big, huge draw for uh, students. Um, one of the things that we get complimented on the most about our expo is when people go up to the booth, uh, all of the scientists are greeting them with, you know, warm, smiling, Disney land type faces, and they're engaged the entire day. Um, you know, and a typical booth at our expo last year, a single 10 by 10 exhibit space, had about six to 8,000 people come through it. Our larger booths had somewhere between 20 and 30,000. Uh, people. So if you can smile after three days uh, of addressing that many people, that's a real task. Uh, in addition uh, to the 
um, you know, people manning the booth, we ask all the booths to be manned by a meet the scientist or engineer to bring it up a level if so engaged by the crowd. We want all the science in our booths to be at a 10th grade science understanding or below, but if so engaged, uh, they can bring it up a level. This year, uh, we added a lot of new features to our expo. Uh, we had a lot of middle school, older middle school kids kind of come to our event last year. We're trying to reach out to older kids um, this year. So we have a career pavilion at our festival where we actually have a job fair, a college fair, and an area to meet scientists slash engineers and ask them any question they would want. So all the, uh, we have about 20 major organizations each hosting an hour. The scientists, then they each bring about 30 scientists and you know, they'll have a little t-shirt where they'll say, I am, and they can fill in a rocket scientist, ask me about jet fuel, or I am an environmentalist, ask me about how to get rid of rocket scientists. So, at our expo. Uh, we have a book fair uh, this year at our festival. Uh, we have uh, 40 leading science and engineering authors uh, in three sort of stages for a, a children's, a teen, and an adult uh, book area. And then I thought I would just end and see if there are any questions and answers. And I can't actually see anybody out there, so. two different ways. 
looking at the demographics of who is coming to my festival uh, and seeing that it really matches up to the local community and we are really getting you know, people that would not normally go there, number one. And number two, making sure our event is sustainable. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, what I'm really happy to report with, the first time I did the San Diego Science Festival, we got about $600,000 in um, corporate support for it. The first time I did the USA Science Festival, we got about a $2.5 million. The second time, we got about $4.5 million. So, you know, I can totally support, you know, my event just by sponsors wanting to come to it uh, and, you know, and support it. I don't need to tap into government financing and so forth. Uh, and uh, that, uh, so I'm looking at it a little bit more like a businessman uh, than, you know, as an academic, uh, you know, style grant type thing in that respect. I hope I answered your question. And I need to stand a little closer to you if you have that kind of energy. <laughs> I can take that on too. <laughs> Uh, what has been your goal? Uh, like you said, you know, you want to reach people who wouldn't otherwise come to these festivals. So, as you started this and as it's growing year by year, well, how do you you envision when these people walk away from the festival? What's their thought? Good question. So, um, when you come to our event, you know we're putting on. You know, we sort of say you're going to see more science at event at, at our event than you're going to see at four years at Harvard, and you're going to have more fun than two weeks at Disney World. Uh, but when you come to our event, all the 650 organizations that are putting on exhibits at our event, their goals are that you walk away learning about scholarships, internships, mentorships, after school programs, and so forth. We're not competing with those organizations in terms of offering those things. We're giving them a forum, you know, in which they can reach out and get the word about, uh, about those programs. And that's why I think organizations you know, participate in our thing. They can see that in one day, you know, they're going to hit so many more people than they would, you know, at a local sort of regional event. So, um, I guess two, two things. One, do you have the ability to follow people or at least send them additional information? later, for example. Uh, question one. Question two is, are the companies using this to recruit people, and did they actually re recruit people? One of the unintended consequences of this uh, thing, of um, forgotten where it was, where they had, I don't know, 100,000 engineers taking a course on computer programming, was actually the ability to find people who were at the top 1% to recruit them into jobs. I'm just wondering if that happened here also. Uh, a couple of derivative things like that happen. So one, yes, we do follow, you know, we try to capture people and follow them through social media and a variety of other mechanisms. I mean, for a small little nonprofit, we have, I think, about 75,000 subscribers just to our newsletter, you know, at this point. Uh, so it's almost like a publication in that regard. So we, are, we have a kind of good reach. Um, we actually have more followers on our Facebook page than we have than except for the World Science Festival, all the other science festivals combined. Um, so we, you know, we kind of have a reach out there in that regard. There are a lot of sort of derivative uh, things that spin off as a result of the festival that, you know, I think we make happen, but, you know, we don't, you know, follow them directly. So, for example, when we bring these leading scientists and engineers into a school, uh, and, for example, I'll give you a good example. Um, Francis Collins went into uh, a school, uh, Bladensburg High School, uh, in Prince George's County uh, a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, uh, I got an email from his, one of his um, public affairs people that said, gee, I've gone to a million conferences with Francis, and he always charms the audience. This is the first time I've ever seen where the audience charmed him, uh, because the kids in the school saw one of his science rock songs online and they got their glee club to learn all the words and sing it back to him. Uh, and it was really spectacular. Uh, well, I can guarantee you the NIH has a close association with that school now. Uh, we had another you know, presentation, similar sort of story, uh, but a local biotech company got hooked up with that school. Well, that school now is getting all sorts of equipment and so forth because they formed a relationship you know, as a result of what we tried to spark, you know, at the, 
you know, at the, you know, individual kind of uh, performance or presentation level. So we have time, I think, for one more question. Uh, I've been hearing of late that the, what some people are calling the STEM problem is really a STEAM problem with the A standing for the arts. And I'm also hearing some people saying, no, it's not. I'd like your opinion. You know, I probably don't have a great answer to that other than to say that at our event, we have a lot of things that show sci the science in art and a lot of things that show the art in science. So we're trying to play it you know, both ways at our events. Um, you know, I, I think that's more of a fundraising sort of, you know, initiative to include the STEAM and, you know, the art and the STEM. Uh, but, you know, it all helps our message uh, in the end. Um, so before you drag me off the stage, I've got to ask a big, huge favor. Um, so last year, uh, the most common email I got was, hey, this was the most fun event that I've never heard of. Um, so there are a lot of uh, pe well-connected people in this audience. Two things. I'm going to leave some posters and postcards aside. Uh, and please bring them back to your office, put them up, hand them out to your people. We've only got four more days uh, to go. Number two, has anybody here heard of Facebook? <laughs> so, okay, so I really would encourage you, please go to our Facebook page, like us. You know, you know that lets your friends know that you're think this is a cool event and help us get the word out about it because we can't we won't do it again unless we get a lot of people that come here again this year thank you very much